Hi everyone and welcome back to Brian's Horror Corner and welcome to this horror franchise review video. It's part of my January 2023 series here where I'm taking a look at the entire Final Destination franchise. Um, I have the first movie review up on my channel so if you haven't seen it go check it out. It should be up there for you to look at. Today though we're going to look at the second movie, the, the sequel to the first movie of the Final Destination franchise. Not that you're going to see it on the front of this cover, because this is the collection, but Final Destination 2 from 2003 is the movie we're going to take a look at and review today. So, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get into Final Destination 2 from 2003. So, first I'll start by saying this is another movie like the first one that I probably haven't seen in 15 years, maybe more. Um, and I think I'd only seen this movie once all the way through, prior to watching it again for this review of this series. So... Um, yeah, anyway, that's just a little, a little, uh, tidbit there. Uh, Final Destination 2 is a 2003 American supernatural horror film directed by David R. Ellis. The screenplay was written by J. Mackey Gruber and Eric Bress, based on a story by Gruber, Bress, and series creator Jeffrey Reddick. It's a sequel to the 2000 film, The Final Destination, and the second installment of the Final Destination film series. So... The movie starts one year after the explosion of Flight 80. College student Kimberly Corman departs with her friends to Daytona for spring break. While en route, Kimberly grows uncomfortable when they enter a highway with several other vehicles. These include lottery winner Evan Lewis, Nora Carpenter, and her teenage son Tim, teacher Eugene Dick, slacker Rory Peters, and pregnant Isabella Hudson, businesswoman Kat Jennings, and officer Thomas Burke. After a log truck loses its its load onto the highway. A chain of events lead to the deaths of everyone, including Kimberly, who wakes up still on the on-ramp to the highway. She panics and blocks the on-ramp, preventing anyone, preventing everyone from getting onto the highway. As Burke asks Kimberly what's happened, the accident occurs, sparing everyone except Kimberly's friends who are killed as Burke tackles Kimberly out of the way of an oncoming truck. The group is mostly aware of Flight 180, but none believe the stories that death was hunting them down. That afternoon, Evan returns to his apartment, but a fire breaks out, and in his escape, his eye is impaled by a fire escape ladder. The following day, Kimberly visits Clear, who seems startled that Evan did laugh that Evan died last in her vision instead of first. Claire refuses to help, so Kim turns to Burke, who, who go to find Nora and Tim, who had gone to the dentist appointment. After a scare in the office, Tim recklessly startles some pigeons as they are calling out. The pigeons cause a crane operator to drop a sheet of plated glass on top of him, crushing him. Claire, Claire offers to help the two of them visit Blutworth, a mortician who hints that new life can invalidate death's list, forcing it to start anew, hinting at Isabella's unborn baby. So <laughs> that's the setup and the premise and the beginning of this movie that kind of gets us into it. As far as the cast goes, we have Allie Larder returning as Claire Rivers, A.J. Cook as Kimberly Corman, Michael Landis as Thomas Burke, David Pataki as Evan Lewis, Linda Boyd as Nora Carpenter, Keegan Connor Tracy as Kat Jennings, Jonathan Cherry as Rory Peters, T.C. Carson as Eugene Dix, Justina Machato as Isabella Hudson, and Tony Todd as William Bloodworth. So yeah, that's the setup for the the setup, the premise, and the the cast for Final Destination Two from two thousand three. Um. I have to say, I really enjoyed this sequel. Now, um, I don't think it's quite as good as the first movie, but it's not far off, in my opinion. Um, there's some things that they did different that I like, and there's some things they did different that I don't like. So let's just go ahead and get into it, starting with the pros or the things I really liked about Final Destination 2. And, of course, most people will mention this. When you think of Final Destination 2, you got to talk about the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie as it relates to... The opening scene with the log truck and the car pileup crash, um, it's so effective in terms of its execution. And I think it might be, I have to watch all the movies because a couple of these I haven't seen, so I don't want to make a blank statement yet. But it could, it could be the best opening scene to any Final Destination movie. I don't think that's um, a hot take. But again, I haven't seen 3, 4, and 5 yet, so we'll see. <clears throat> but it's a very effective sequence. And from everything from the kills that we see, um, 
the blood and the gore, which is definitely part of the sequence, the camera work and how they, sh how they shoot like, um, from people's point of views, they shoot up, they shoot down, um, the intensity of it all and just the overall direction. I think the director, David R. Ellis, this is his best job in this, this part of the movie is definitely this opening sequence during this car crash. And I have to say, I've seen a lot of movies. This might be one of the best car crash sequences ever put on film. That's how much I like it. And again, it gets you right into the movie. You're, you're instantly engaged um, because it's such just a, just a full blown, um, car crash with all kinds of practical effects, explosions, and really creative and, and gory death scenes, quite frankly. So <clears throat> that's, of course, the first thing that comes to mind with Final Destination 2. I have to say, too, next, I really like how well this movie follows the template of the first movie, but it doesn't just, it doesn't repeat all the same beats. It repeats some of them, of course, and that, you know, these people survive something that they shouldn't have, and then they're being pursued by death who comes after them and takes most of them out before the end of the movie. I mean, that's basically what all these movies are. And just like the first movie, that certainly happens in this movie. But there are some different things as well that I really enjoyed. Some, most that I enjoyed, especially the, like the main characters, friends dying right away, as opposed to other people. Like in the first movie, the friends are the ones that got off the plane, the main character and her friends or classmates. Um, and they're the ones that have to tr try to survive. In this movie, they kind of did a turnabout on that, where you think the main character's friends are going to be the survivors along with her, that she's going to keep them from being in this accident and ends up being the opposite, where the, the rest of her friends um, are the ones that are killed as part of this huge car crash. And these strangers that she sort of prevents from getting on the on-ramp to the highway are the ones that um, sort of have death coming after them. So I thought that was a kind of a different uh, a different take and sort of a, an interesting and unique uh, turnabout. Um, I also especially like how the main, um, or how the strangers surviving end up having ties to the first movie and and those characters from the first movie who, um, who end up surviving initially, but then ultimately death comes for them throughout the movie. Um, and the fact that they basically put the deaths of these people on hold, because death has to sort of wipe the slate clean with them, um, the fact that they survive. So it's like, it kind of gives the idea that the, the whole plan that death had in the first movie is actually even larger than that, that this death's plan um, goes into another movie and all these other people that were supposed to die and didn't because of because of this design that was stopped in the first one. It's just a very clever and unique thing. It's sort of this spider web of 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 deaths here and, and death's design. And I, I just, I really liked how in this movie how they tied to the first movie so well, um, to those initial characters. I thought it made for a fun and clever premise that's very thought-provoking as well. So that was definitely one thing that I, that I enjoyed. I also have to say I enjoyed Tony Todd's appearance more in this movie as Bloodworth than I did in the first movie. In the first movie, I felt like, yeah, he was creepy, but it was it was mostly an exposition dump. And even though in this movie, it's kind of an exposition dump as well, I felt like his appearance and his performance felt, well, it was just as creepy. He also had a sadistic sense of humor that, I don't know, overall the character just worked better for me. And it felt like he had more of a purpose in this movie, even though the screen time was probably about the same as the first movie. But yeah, I love Tony Todd. And I, like I said, I enjoyed him even more in this movie than the first movie. Then you got to talk about the kills in this movie, which they def definitely ratchet up from the first movie, especially in terms of the blood and the gore. Um, the, my favorite kill has to be the one outside the dentist office, and or the whole dentist office scene, I should say, and the subsequent kill that comes out of that. There's definitely a good amount of gore and blood in all these kills, but that one in particular, it was very, it was really um, just cool the way that. Um, this particular character ends up dying, uh, just the way it looks from a gore standpoint, from a violence standpoint, um, from a practical uh, effects standpoint. It was very, very clever. There's a couple of kills, namely one having to do with the, um, like the escape ladder that I talked about in my opening premise of the movie that is definitely CGI, is more CGI, and it doesn't age all that well. But for the most part, there's a lot more practical than there is CGI effects in this movie. But that was my favorite kill. And yeah, overall, the kills in this movie, there's another kill later on having to do with a barbed wire fence, too, that's very gnarly. 
uh, when you see it on screen, just very cool. And again, that looked like it was pretty much practical. Um, so the kills are definitely a highlight of this movie. But getting on to that, the practical effects, as I mentioned, are really solid, especially the car crash. As it relates to that opening car crash sequence, the explosions throughout the movie. There's one at the very end, of course, there's, during the car crash, there's explosions. This movie definitely has a bigger budget, and I think it shows in that opening sequence with the car crash. Um, and then again, I love the final scene, as most people do with this movie, having to do with the barbecue explosion and a, a limb that's blown into the air and, and knocked in front of one of the other characters who kind of loses their shit. It's just a great way to end the movie after you, once again, kind of like the first movie, you think that everything's good to go and you can wipe your hands of it all. And uh, as it turns out, you really can't. And um, yeah, it was just a great way to end the movie and go out on that note. So... And I also have to say, I thought um, it was it was cool to see Allie Larder return as Clear Rivers. Um, AJ Cook, I thought, did a good job as the as the main character here. Not as good as Devin Sawa in the first movie, um, but I thought she was good as the main character. The rest of the characters or the rest of the performances, eh, it's kind of like the first movie. They range from being pretty good to okay to not very good at all. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to bring that up before I moved on. Um, now we'll get into some of the cons with Final Destination 2. Um, I have to say, the movie doesn't feel quite as high level as the first movie. And then you're probably wondering to yourself, well, how can you say that? You just said it had a bigger budget. Yes, it has a bigger budget in terms of effects and kills. But as far as the movie goes, it's definitely missing that James Wan part of it. To f make it feel like a higher level horror movie, I think is the best way to describe it. Um, I don't think the cinematography and the directing is quite as strong throughout this movie as it certainly was in the first movie. I just don't feel like overall, from a horror movie standpoint, it's quite on the same level from the buildup of tension and suspense to the cinematography, the directing, um, even some of the acting. Um, so that's one thing that really caught my attention in a negative way. As I said, there is some badly dated CGI related to a couple of kills, mainly the fire escape or the escape ladder kill through the face. That was clearly CGI. It was kind of laughable. Um, the ending story twist that they throw into this movie related to cheating death and, and bringing new life by in a way to cheat death, I just, it really didn't do much for me. I felt like it was kind of unnecessary and not all that important in a Final Destination movie. It felt like it was maybe tacked on, and I really just didn't care when I found out what the twist was and that they they tried to take in this uh, this different direction. It's just, I think because it didn't feel genuine for one and two, I just didn't care about it that much. I mean, when I'm watching Final Destination, I don't need Inception in my Final Destination movies. I mean, these movies are specifically like other franchises, like a Friday the 13th. We go to them for one reason, to, to find out what the like sort of what the avoidance kill was, like that sort of that opening sequence in all these movies, the creativity involved with that, and then the creativity of the kills and the the overall um, on-screen violence and and uh, blood and gore of the kills, basically. And um, they don't need to try to be overly clever. And I felt like this movie tried to do that a little too much. Again, I was totally on board with the connection to the first movie and, and kind of throwing the audience off with killing the friends instead of the other people involved. But yeah, that whole end twist, that was, you're trying too hard there, in my opinion, didn't need it. I did feel like this movie was a little too exposition heavy throughout as well, trying to, as the characters are trying to figure it out and explaining what happened in the first movie uh, by multiple characters doing the explaining as well. It isn't just one person. That just wasn't needed, and it kind of takes away from the, that buildup of tension and suspense that's ultimately missing in this movie. Um, some of the humor, especially by Rory, who in this movie is basically your um, your jokester, or your, your comic relief. I thought it was trying a little bit too hard. The first movie had humor, but it didn't feel like it was trying as hard. And I feel like the humor in this movie, they try to replace the suspense, which we don't really get a lot of in this movie, that we had in the first movie with just more humor. And it's, again, this movie's nowhere, the buildup of tension and suspense just is not not there in the second movie like it is the first movie. And a lot of that has to do with James Wan's absence. So, and then finally, kind of getting on to what I said about the twist, the plot gets a little too convoluted towards the third act. And as a re not just with that twist, but some of the other things that are going on. And as a result, 
I felt that the third act of the second movie was a lot less effective than than the than the third final act in the than the original Final Destination was. But yeah, that's all I've got. For Overall, guys, this is a great sequel. Final Destination Two is an easy watch. Definitely something I could see putting on as a as a as a double bill with the first movie. Like I said, I really like that it connects. The first and second movies connect so well, not just having Allie Larder back as Claire Rivers, but some of those plot things that I mentioned as well and the connections between the characters of the first movie and the second movie, along with ratcheting up the kills and a great opening sequence with the car crash. Um, there's there's a lot to like here, still more than there isn't. Um, it's just not quite as strong as the first movie. That's the main takeaway. But that being said, it's not far off. And I'm going to give this movie an 8 out of 10 for Final Destination 2 from 2003. You know, they did some different things. They had a bigger budget. A lot of it worked. Some of it didn't. But overall, it's an enjoyable watch. And 8 out of 10 is what I'm going to give Final Destination 2 from 2003. Go ahead and comment down below what you guys think of the second Final Destination movie. Do you like it more than I do? Less? Why? Why not? Please like this video and hit the little notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews for this series. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel as well so you don't miss any of my great horror content, not just this series, but the, the ones that I have coming up over the next three, four months. So thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope everybody's having a good first part of the new year and stay scared. Bye.